We talked about track limits last week. I told y'all to enjoy those. Uh, the Xfinity and the Truck Series gave us 37 penalties of the you know that we know of. Right? Mm-hmm. There were probably at least were 50 uh, mm-hmm. track limit violations. 50 uh, would be a round round number that I feel good about. Uh, the 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 Cup race did not have. I don't think Cup race had quite as many of those. I felt that that was probably going to be the case because the cars. The car's easier to control. I don't want to say it's easier to drive because nothing at the limit is easy, but it's just more, it's better suited and better well built for left and right turns, right? <clears throat> Where the truck and the Xfinity car, even Byron gets out after qualifying and goes, man, that thing's a handful. No grip. And so, you know, you get in a cup car and, and they just better at not making those mistakes. And so uh, we didn't see quite as many issues with that, um, but we didn't see yellows either. <clears throat> you know, we saw we had the stage cautions that are uh, sort of the uh, not the they're not fake yellows, but they're 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 the not the natural not cautions, not the natural yeah. yellows. Not natural, yeah. <laughs> yes, and so uh, they're they're fabricated yellows. Whatever you want, I don't know what you call them, <laughs> but uh, anyways, um. I had a conversation with somebody in the industry about, you know, well, why didn't NASCAR throw yellows? They had debris all over turn eight, right? Turn eight's the turn where they were cutting. Right. I think. And so yeah. <clears throat> that tr- I got a picture of that, and I sent that to, to you, Andrew. It was covered in, in, obviously covered in dirt from the inside of the curbing, but also little rocks covered that co- corner. And when I saw that picture, I thought, I think that's reason enough to throw a yellow. Maybe not like inside 10 laps to go. You let it play out. But I think if you're sitting there with that kind of track conditions, you could have thrown a yellow with 20 to go and said, we really need to clean this up. Yeah. This has gotten out of hand. It almost didn't even look like track. No. It looked like a sand yeah. trap almost. So, there, you know, all of the spins, the, the solo spins and all that stuff going on, that's no reason to throw a yellow on a big track like that unless a car stalls get stuck or whatever but i think the the corner you could argue that the the situation on the track the surface of the racetrack in turn eight was was maybe reason enough to say all right with with 20 to go or 15 to go still a long ways in that race <clears throat> we might could get a yellow to clean this up otherwise man i mean if the if there's no reason to throw a yellow don't throw it um, I saw this really interesting stat on social media. Um, somebody did a little homework that was really, really cool. I wish I had this to show it to you guys. But in all of NASCAR history, up until around 2000, just some roughly 2000, 2004, NASCAR had an average of, let's just say, one and a half debris cautions a race. Right? <laughs> For 30 years, that was the average And right around 2000 to 2004, from that moment up until stage cautions, the number of debris yellows jumped by two per race. And, I mean, we were talking about, I was talking about this in my driving career in the 2000s and 2010s about these debris yellows. And they were horse Right. They would have a caution and wouldn't even, you know, the network wouldn't even be able to show you anything on the racetrack because it didn't exist. Phantom, yeah, the yeah, phantom, phantom yellows, yeah. right? They were real. They not, they weren't real yellows, but the phantom yellows were did did exist because there was a chunk of time from for about fifteen years where the yellow flags for debris just inexplicably jumped by two per race. From a 30-year history. And then, as soon as stage cautions came back, that number of debris yellows reset back to the norm. How about that? <laughs> think you're onto something, Dale. <laughs> There's going to be a Reddit thread about this in a few yeah. days. Someone's going to investigate look, this they should, further. I've seen, I saw something on social media, and man, maybe I even saved the damn picture of it. But uh, I was so like, holy shit. There it is. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to waste our time looking for it, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. And <clears throat> I was like, yes, there's the proof. 
Uh, but look, I, I I like the race playing out. If it if it's a if it's an authentic ass kicking, and there's no reason to throw a yellow, let's not let's not turn it into a an, an entertainment show, right? <clears throat> let's not manufacture anything. But um, right before this race, this is when I had my hot take that that might have been a little bit sideways. I said after the Xfinity race, I was disappointed with the Xfinity race. I didn't enjoy it. Now, the beating and banging on the last lap, that's great. Right. I enjoyed that moment, but that doesn't make a good race to me. Right. And so, you know, a good finish doesn't mean it was a great race. Three of my cars got black flagged for course course cutting. I was disappointed we didn't get the four for four. But the eight car, (laughs) Sammy, he had other issues. So it was just a rough day across the board for Junior Motorsports. That played a role in probably my feelings about enjoying the race. But, you know, we had a lot of guys that I saw cutting the course that didn't get penalized. And a lot of people that, um, that you know, it was just frustrating to watch. And, it, and I'm like, I'm getting more and more angry about the design of the course Never in one, never at one point in the weekend was I frustrated with NASCAR and their rulings or their decision making. It's impossible to get that perfect. Uh, you can't. There's cars going through there side by side. You're like, well, I can't penalize a guy, even though it looked like he probably was on the inside of the curb. I couldn't see it because he's there's another car between us. So I mean, you can't perfectly, you know, you can't perfectly govern this. But um, I want to talk about this some more. Byron is called in. We can ask him about this ourselves. What is the answer going forward? Um, we can even cover my hot take that went south. <laughs> Let's get him on the phone. And, hey, I wanted to talk to you. We were just talking about Coda, track limits. I got so frustrated yeah. at, uh, at the track limits during the Xfinity race. I thought we should never go back to Coda. Um, but it, And I didn't think it would be an issue in the cup race. And you talked about how the cars are just um, more – the cars are more reliable – but also yeah. the car is purpose built to be able to turn left and right, and it probably goes around that racetrack better or easier than a than a than a than right. a bush car, so you're less mistake prone. Um, and I talked to Kevin Harvick a little bit this morning about this as well. What is the answer? What is the answer? We want to. We don't yeah. want NASCAR in the officiating of track limits. We don't want to be at a racetrack where we even have to say the word. So, what do you think yeah. is the answer to this? You know, have you had a chance to talk about that? Does it even matter? I mean, you won the race. Sometimes when I win a race, I could care less what everybody else's problems are. Yeah, I mean, so I I agree on that. A lot of times, you know, you win and your your judgment's a little uh, different. But I do feel like so during the race for me, like I hated the track limits because as the leader, I felt like I was at a disadvantage. Like if I'm if I want to be aggressive with my line and make time if i'm in second or third like i'm gonna push that stuff a lot more so i i hate that that's the case because i feel like as a leader you're in a spot where you don't really want to make that mistake and um you don't know i guess how aggressive they're going to be in calling it so um i just feel like they they've got to limit they've got to protect us from ourselves basically and put some curbing in that that we can you know, that is a clear line that we're going to damage our car or go over it and mess up our race. And so I just think that's the only way with big, heavy stock cars that you're going to protect us because we're, I mean, we're going to use all the track and, and the only limit to that is, is walls or curbs that are going to damage the car. So I talked to Kevin a little bit and he said that they have all types, different types, sizes and heights of curbs, the turtles that a lot of people like to call them and they have them at yeah. that facility that they do install different curbing around that racetrack for different series to race. And so there may be, I think the perfect world would be to find some type of a, a curbing that would not hurt, would not hurt your car, but it would just yeah. be a slower line to, to, to use it. Right. You wouldn't right. want to use it because you just go slower through the segment of the, of the course. Um, so maybe there's right. an answer there. We always think, you know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people, and, and myself included, we get trapped into thinking no curbs or, or, or full blue turtles, right? That's the only options. Well, mm-hmm. there's some middle, yeah. middle ground there on, 
on the severity of the curb that would be enough of a deterrent. But there's also the the mouthpieces, and, and they've seen a lot of great data in the last couple of years of what you guys go through, so much so that they're cutting curbs like at the entrance to the bus stop at Watkins Glen. They actually shave that down because they learned that it was so severe for you guys to have to go through that. I mean, yeah. is it is it – is that a concern? Not so much, you know, you worry about the car, but also the drivers as well. What What is it like for the driver to go over those curbs? For sure. Like Watkins Glen in uh, 2022 when the car was, was new, you know, we, we all try to get as close, you know, get our cars as low as possible. And with that, you've got the pucks on the bottom of the car. So um, you, the first few times I, uh, I actually ran double duty in 2022. So I ran Xfinity and Cup at Watkins Glen and I ran the Xfinity car and I was like, man, the ride quality is not too bad. You know, it feels it's rough through the bus stop, but it's okay. I got in a cup car to practice and no joke, no joke. Like the first run I hit the curb and I like my head hurt and I was like, damn, like that hurt. Like I need a minute. And so it just, I think that is a little bit, you know, that's what we're up against with this car. It's pretty rigid, but um, it's gotten a lot better as we've improved the ride quality and the shocks and springs. But, um, yeah, that first time 2022, I remember hitting the curb and feeling like I needed to take a breather. Yeah. They've they trimmed the curb down on the entrance to the bus stop. And, and I actually got to go see it, uh, and saw some pictures as well. And you guys are going to be right up against that barrier heading into that corner. It's going to be awesome, but a little bit better entry. 